The New York Jets are now on the board. Okay, Jet fans, Darrell Revis. Being in New York has been one of the greatest blessings. Zach Smith Avenue, we're in that one right now. The New York Jets flex. Welcome to the final episode of NFL Draft Preview in the 2022 season, but I guess we should call this NFL Draft Review. Dane, the Jets, in your eyes, had your favorite draft. They only had seven picks, but why are they your favorite draft of all 32 teams in the NFL? I love Sauce Gardner, the top corner this year. Uh, Garrett Wilson, my top receiver. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, uh, a player we talked about, uh, you know, ad nauseum just as a a guy this Jets team really liked, and I think probably paying them to pass at number 10, uh, but be able to come back into the first round of 26 and still get him, that, that's huge. And then uh, not only that, but then picking up Reese Hall in the second, or Jeremy Rucker, who we talked about a lot throughout the process as being a perfect Jet. And then what they did uh, in the fourth round, top to bottom, I just love what the Jets did. I think, you know, only seven picks, I think they nailed each one. All right, well, let's just go pick by pick here. Pick number four, Ahmad Sauce Gardner. What makes Sauce Gardner worthy of the fourth overall pick, and what, what should Jets fans be expecting from a pretty early stage from him? There's no arguing with Sauce Gardner uh, being one of the best players on the board when they were selecting there at four. Uh, tall, stretched-out athlete, big-time uh, speed, uh, for that, especially for that size. Uh, Love the length. Uh, a guy that wasn't thrown at very, very much. He still had three interceptions each of the last three years. Pleasantly surprised because I think Sauce Gardner, uh, one of the best uh, defensive players in this draft, could end up being the best defensive player from this draft. All right, moving on to pick number 10, Garrett Wilson, your top receiver. You've been on that since day one. What should Jets fans be most excited about in terms of Garrett Wilson's strengths? Yeah, and with Garrett Wilson, and my comparison for him has been C.D. Lamb, and I think similar to C.D. Lamb, he could play anywhere on that offensive uh, on the offensive formation. You want to play inside, outside, uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, you know, you can motion him all over, it, it backfield. You, you don't have to uh, pigeonhole him as he's an X only or uh, a Y only, Z only. He can do everything up and down the formation, and that gives you flexibility. He just makes the playbook come alive. He really does. That has been my line with him throughout the process uh, because he can get open before the catch and give his quarterback a clear window. He can get after, get open after the catch and, and really be a creator uh, with the ball in his hand. The Jets had picks 35 and 38. They move up nine spots. Similar to last year, they moved up nine spots as well from 23 to 14 to select Elijah Vera Tucker. They go from 35 to 26. Jermaine Johnson out of Florida State. How surprised were you that he was still available at pick number 26? Oh, extremely. I mean, pass rushers don't last very long in the NFL draft, and he's the exception. I mean, we we heard after the draft, uh, the Jets got three of their top eight players, uh, including Jermaine Johnson, uh, which tells you, and we talked about it before the draft. We knew how much they liked Jermaine Johnson. You don't want to trade away, uh, you know, high draft capital, but if you have a chance to go get one of your guys that you ranked very high in this draft, this is why you pour all the resources into scouting is to build the board, and trust it. And at a certain point, it just became it became too much. We can't let him fall anymore. Go get Jermaine Johnson. This is a guy that's going to come in, play the run. He's going to get after the quarterback. Um, I you know I don't know that he's ever going to be a perennial Pro Bowler per se, but he is going to be an above average pro for a long time, in my opinion. All right. So just when you thought the Jets, you know, maybe they'll trade back in the second round because. They traded up to get Jermaine Johnson. Maybe they want to recoup some of those picks. That's not the case. They move up two spots. They execute a trade with the New York Giants. They take Brees Hall, the running back of Iowa State. What is it about Brees Hall that makes him, in your eyes, a viable option to be the first running back called on draft night? You know, it's hard to argue with Brees Hall. I mean, it's hard, it's just hard to poke holes in him as a player. Uh, I mean, everything that you see with Brees Hall, you like. Uh, 41 touchdowns. Uh, over the last two years, 41 uh, rushing touchdowns the last two years. Set an FBS record with 24 straight games with at least one rushing touchdown. It, the guy just finds the end zone. All right, then the Jets end day two with pick number 101. Still on offense, tight end Jeremy Ruckert. Now, we talked a lot about Ruckert, his prowess as a run blocker, but what do you think about the situation he now walks into. I love the value with Jeremy Ruckert, and, and I love the player. I mean, the Long Island native. Uh, it's funny, I 
uh, tweeted back in, in January. I looked it up. It's January 15th. How I love the fit of Jeremy Rucker in that jet scheme. And his dad, Jeremy's dad, actually responded to that tweet at the time with a uh, picture of young Jeremy Rucker with a Jets tattoo on his cheek. And I thought, oh, yeah, I mean, it, it's perfect. You know, the Long Island native stays close to home. And, it, you know, it t- turns out it came to fruition. So uh, Jeremy Rucker, I love the fit. I love what he adds to that room. And then, you know, towards the end of his rookie contract, year three, what, how are we talking about Jeremy Rucker? I, I think it's there's a lot of optimism about what he could be and possibly an eventual starter. All right, how about day three? The Jets have two picks. Max Mitchell, tackle out of Louisiana, is the first one. What does he bring to the table that maybe the Jets don't have right now? When you watch the tape, you see a guy that uh, really loves to mix things up with his hands, uh, moves pretty well, um, and and you love that he has experience across the the offensive line. He was primarily a right tackle at Louisiana, but also played left tackle, played a little bit of guard. Um, and this is a player that should have redshirted, uh, but he didn't. They needed him right on the field immediately. Uh, and, I mean, he was basically a starter when he showed up. So um, a guy that's still learning, still developing. But at that point in the fourth round, uh, I, I really like that uh, that investment. All right, Michael Clemens, this is the Jets' final draft pick, pick number 117, Texas A&M. So what is it about – Michael Clemens, that if you're the Jets, that excites you about him as a prospect. Yeah, I mean, throw in the LSU tape from last year. Uh, if you want to get excited about Michael Clemens, um, his ability to you because he's, he's so long as a player, almost 35 inch arms, um, and he's so powerful at contact. His hands are so, so heavy. It's not hard to really like this player, and it's because he already owns NFL physical traits. He, he looks the part. When he goes into that uh, Jets locker room, uh, I, I think it, uh, his teammates will kind of look at him and say, oh, when, when, when we sign you? I mean, I don't think they'll realize this is a rookie uh, we're talking about here. He is physically ready for the NFL. That is the perfect way to end the review episode of NFL Draft Preview. That puts a period, Dane, at the end of the 2022 NFL Draft. As always, it's been a pleasure. And, you know, next year, maybe the Jets don't have two first-round picks as it stands, but you never know what's going to happen, so... It's been a pleasure, and we'll talk to you next season. Can't wait. Thanks, Ethan.